What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Box and Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at a very good fighter by the name of Midget Wargas. Let's take a look at his career. Midget Wargas was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on July 18, 1910. He was an Italian-American, Christian Joseph Robert Lucastos. He rose from the ranks as amateurs, came up with one of the top flyweights in the climate of the world honors. Following his retirement of Corporal Izzy Sports in 1930, Wargas was matched with Black Bill. Black Bill, fascinating fighter, was Black Bill. And about recognized by the New York Commission. As for the championship of the world, but the NBA deferred and recognized as its title holder, Frankie Gennaro, very good fighter. Gennaro and Wargas met on December 26, 1930 in New York City and about resulted in a draw. Gennaro then went to face or to fans, excuse me, where he faced Young Perez and what was designed by European Boxing Union and the National Boxing Association as a world championship bout. And Perez won the crown. Wargas, in the meantime, continued to box all comers in California. And with it, any further claim to world laws at the time, he was, however, the American flyweight king. Wargas was the earliest of his family of ten children, six boys and four girls. His father was born in Naples and boxed under the name Mickey Williams. Major started his professional career in 1927 when he fought Willie Davis and won in ten rounds. So he began his professional career with a 10-rounder. Thereafter, he has kept busy and traveled to all parts of the country, gaining many victories. Two months after winning the New York version of the world title, he, he, defended, uh, he defended it successfully by stopping Willie Lamonte in six rounds. One of his outstanding performances was turned against Jackie Brown in London on October 30th, 1933. Winning the verdict in 12 rounds and a big upset. Wargas ended his career in 1940 fighting as a lightweight. He died in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on October 19th, 1955. Let's take a look at his profile. July 10th, he was born Joseph Luscalzo, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 1925, he began his professional debut at the age of 15. Nineteen thirty, he won a New York recognition as World Flyweight Championship. Nineteen thirty-five, he lost New York World Flyweight title against Small Montana. 1940, last fight in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He died in Philadelphia, October 19, 1955, at the age of 45. Midget Wargas had a career record of 199 fights. He won 147, lost 36, and drew 16. Midget Wargas weighed 112 pounds and stood five foot three and a quarter inch or three and a half inches and was managed by Johnny Keys. He began his professional career in 1927, was placed on a card on November 3rd against Willie Davis, New York City, defeated him in 10 rounds. 1928, January 15th, Billy Kelly, Scranton, Pennsylvania, he lost in 10 rounds. February 20th, Willie Davis, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, defeated him in 10 rounds. May 28th, Willie Davis again, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, defeated him in 10 rounds for a second time. July 30th, 
Phil Thomas fought him three consecutive times. Atlantic City defeated him in 10 rounds. Jersey City, New, uh, New Jersey defeated him in eight rounds. And New York City, he lost to him in 10 rounds. 1929, actually he fought him a fourth time, February 12th. New York had a 10 round draw. And as you can see here, the rest are all victories. One KO against Tommy Milton, July 26th, New York, uh, KO'd him in three rounds. 1930, look at the schedule. Look at the schedule. February 10th, Cisco Grande, New York, defeated him in 10 rounds. March 11th, Pinky Silverbird, New York, defeated him in 10 rounds. March 21st, Black Bill, outstanding fighter. I'll show you his profile one day. New York, defeated him in 15 rounds for the New York State recognition as world flyweight champion. May 8th, he would face Pinky Silverbird again. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, defeat him in eight rounds. May 16th, Willie Lamonte, New York, knock him out in six rounds, New York title bout. And he continues, Speedy Dato, I'm just going to go through it. Los Angeles, California, knock him out in five rounds, July 29th. Speedy Dato, outstanding fighter. Philadelphia, uh, I'm sorry, he was a Filipino fighter. August 19th. Newsboy Brown, another good fighter. Los Angeles, lost to him in 10 rounds. Fascinating. Willie Davis again, Toronto, 10 rounds. He would defeat him. December 19. December 26, Frankie Gennaro, New York. 15-round draw for the vacant World Flyweight Championship. Look at the schedule in 1931. This is ridiculous. The man is literally fighting... Once a week. And these are 10 round fights. This is crazy. March 3rd, Willie Davis, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, defeat him in 10 rounds. March 9th, Pinky Silverberg, Portland, defeat him in 10 rounds. April 13th, Archie Bell, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, very good fighter was Archie Bell, defeat him in 10 rounds. Let me show you Archie Bell. I want to apologize to you. That Archie Bell book is too far up. I owe you Archie Bell. But, uh, yeah, 1931. I'm just skimming through here. June 1st, Lou Barber. Defeated him in 10 rounds. Fought him again. May 4th, 10 rounds. Yeah, but Archie Bell is a very, very good fighter. I wish I can get to that book to show him to you. I have his profile as well. He has a, a long record. Very, very, uh, a lot of fights. June 19th, Lou Franklin, Atlantic City, New Jersey. No decision, 10 rounds. July 13th, Ruby Bradley, Brooklyn, New York. Defeated him in 15 rounds, New York. Title bout. All these fights in one year. This is crazy right here. That's how it was back then. And that's why all this undefeated stuff, if you're fighting in that time, you're going to get picked off. Especially with the, with the fighters I'm looking at. It's just the way it is. That's why they have losses from time to time. They're fighting all the time. I mean, it's just I mean, it's common sense. Here you got October 7th, Speedy Dato, Oakland. And all of these fighters could punch. They, they, <laughs> wow. December 2nd, Speedy Dato, Oakland, fought him again, fought him again. Canto Roberto, fascinating. 1932, January 12th, uh, look at that little poncho, fought him twice in a row, Honolulu. And look how they're traveling in a short period of time. A lot of them are traveling by boat, plane. I mean, they, they jet lag, they fighting. This is crazy. Salute to these fighters. Look at this one loss in all them fights that he had in that year. He had probably about three losses for that whole, whole year. Fascinating. 1933, Jackie Wilson, February 3rd, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jackie Wilson was a dynamic fighter. I'm trying to tell you. Ten round draw.
June 28th, Skippy Allen, New York City. Very Another good fighter. Eight rounds. July 13th, Lou Fel- uh, Farber, Brooklyn, New York. Lost him in 10 rounds. Jackie Brown, London, England. Now he went from... Let's take a look at this. September 28th, Bobby Littman, right? Montreal, Canada. Lost in 10 rounds. Then he goes back the next month, October 30th, Jackie Brown in London, England, and defeats him in 12 rounds. Next month, November 13th, look at this, in Paris. 10 round draw. Wow, two months later, 1934, January 15th, Jimmy Perrin, New Orleans, defeats him at eight rounds. Dewey Cannon, Mobile, Alabama, 10 round victory. Lou Sousko, another good fighter, New York, eight round victory. Fought him again in New York. Eight round draw. Because he said, while I'm out here, let's do it again. Sammy Seaman, good fighter. Alexandria, 10 round victory. Henry Hook, New Orleans, Louisiana, 10 round victory. This is fascinating. December 21st, Henry Armstrong, San Francisco. He lost him in 10 rounds. It's supposed to show you the fighter Henry Armstrong was. That's why I have him ranked number four in all boxing history. Juan Zurita, very good fighter. February 21st, Los Angeles, California, defeats him in 10 rounds. Great victory. Young Tommy, Hollywood, another good fighter, defeats him in 10 rounds. I'm not hyping this up. January 25th, Johnny Pena. It's a Filipino fighter, very good fighter, January 11th, San Francisco, 10 round draw. This, this is fascinating. For Juan Rosita twice in a row. May 25th, June 28th, both in Hollywood, defeat him twice, 10 rounds. Baby Casanova. Juan Zarita, Mexico City, he was stopped in five rounds. We're at 1936. Bobby Gray, another good fighter. August 28th, African American fighter. Knocked him out in uh, seven rounds. It's in Pasadena, California. Baby Adad, very good fighter. St. Louis, 10 round draw. This is September 11th. Look at the schedule. September 28th, Perfecto Lopez, another good fighter. Los Angeles, wow, this is crazy. This has to be one of the, one of the, wow, one of the best resumes. Lost in eight rounds. Then he got right back in there with Perfecto Lopez on October 19th, Los Angeles. He lost again in 10 rounds. He started going downhill at this point. November 17th, Young Reitmeyer, St. Louis, lost him in 10 rounds. Davy Abad, St. Louis, lost him in 10 rounds. Then he had a 10-round draw, December 15th. Norman Quells, Norfolk, Virginia. Then he gets back in there again. 1937, February 4th. Johnny Hutchison, another good fighter. I think I showed you him yesterday. African American fighter, very good. Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, lost, uh, defeated him in 10 rounds. February 25th. Tommy Gross. Tommy Cross, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, defeated him in 10 rounds. May 13th, Tommy Cross, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, lost him in 10 rounds. June 16th, Dick Welch, Richmond, Virginia, 10-round draw. June 25th, Lou Feldman, Long Beach, California, lost him in 10 rounds. July 6th, Maxie Berger, another good fighter. Brooklyn, New York, lost him eight rounds. In fact, I was just looking at Maxie Berger's profile, I think it was two days ago. October 16th, George Daly, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, defeated him in 10 rounds. November 4th, Tommy Cross, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, lost him in 10 rounds. 1938, he had four fights, two losses, one win, and he was stopped one. So he had uh, three losses that year. 1939, he had three losses, one knockout. But you know what? Salute to Major Wargas. 
Dynamite Fighter, definitely going in my museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. This is what I'm talking about. When the career's over, it's over. That's it, no looking back. But do it all while you can. This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. Salute to Mr. Wargas. He has been entered in my museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. Great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute to my subscribers. Peace.